Well, today I talked about my 25 year experience uh, with the Upshaw family in the Freedom Colony of County Line, which is located in Northwest Nacogdoches County, East Texas. And uh, as I said, 25 years, uh, when I first went out there, I had no idea that, uh, that I would end up doing a book or an exhibit or anything like that. I was, I, I was drawn out there out of just sheer curiosity having just learned that there were, there were old uh, African-American communities in East Texas that dated from the emancipation, uh, uh, built on land that the former slaves actually owned. And uh, since none of, any, none of this is in our history books, I was totally surprised and amazed that such a thing was possible and, and as I said, became very curious. Uh, in this particular community, it was uh, founded by uh, three brothers, Gus Felix and Jim Upshaw. They were all born uh, as slaves in the 1850s. Their parents were John Upshaw and Lucy, uh, born in different states and brought there probably by this man, W.P. Selman, who was a landowner in Douglas, Texas. I, I met a, a man named Marion Upshaw who was working at the time in the school district in uh, Nacogdoches and he, he was born and raised in the community and I went and vi visited with him and told him that I would like to come out and perhaps uh, spend some time uh, photographing the, the community and learning about its history. And so he invited me out to meet his parents uh, who were living out there still. Uh, I, I did do that on the day after Thanksgiving in 1988 and it didn't go terribly well because I think they'd had a, already had a bad experience with a white photographer. Uh, so that didn't work, but then Marion Upshaw, their son, suggested that I get back in my truck and go a little further down the road and introduce myself to his uncle Monell Upshaw, his father's younger brother. This, this is uh, Monell Upshaw, the, uh, the head of the family. And I will never forget the first time I met him. I did go down the road and uh, parked my truck under the big red oak tree in their yard, got out, saw a very large man in a hog pen that I took to be Monell. So I, I walked over there, introduced myself, told him what I wanted to do, you know, learn about the history of the community and his family and take photographs and would that be all right with him? And he paused for a moment and said, well, I don't see why not. My, my desire was to make photographs, learn about the history, and to hopefully, in the long run, promote a better understanding of this part of not only African-American history, but American history. Part of what stimulated me was the fact that I knew nothing at all about these places and you know I have a master's degree I'm supposedly a fairly well educated person and yet I, I had zero knowledge not not just of Canaan but the fact that there were actually hundreds of these places throughout East Texas and probably throughout the entire south for that matter and yet I knew nothing about about them and that concerned me because the the, the story about what happened to the slaves when they became freed is they became uh, sharecroppers which is really kind of another form of slavery, are domestics working for white folks. In other words, they were not autonomous beings. And yet these folks, not 100% autonomous, but I'd say 80 or 90%. Uh, so, but it was not in the history books. This is a photograph of the family that basically took me in and where I spent a great deal of time over those 25 years. Uh, and to my, this is Monell and Leota sitting down with their 13 children. And to my knowledge, this is the only picture in existence of all of them in one place at the same time. And it was not, I'll tell you, it wasn't easy to make this happen. <laughs> in the beginning, especially, I, I was very aware that I was in, di in a different cultural context. Uh, w one of the things that, that that I was really curious about is knowing that these communities were formed immediately after emancipation and knowing that the, the, the founders of the community raised their children there pretty much autonomous from white folks. Not, you know, and that was Jim Crow time, so it was no such thing as being totally immune, but they lived far away from white people. They were insulated from a lot of that 
And so their children grew up in a, in a, a very different context from a lot of other black children right after emancipation. The kids were living in town and all that. So I, w I was very curious to know what, if any, effect that had on them. And that's part of what drew me out there. So like I said, I was, in a, I was very aware that I was, in a, I was not in a white man's context at all. This was a different, different place. And, and I felt f for a while very self-conscious about that. And yet, you know, the, the leaders of the community accepted me at face value for reasons I'll never really understand. That was not necessarily true of everybody else. I think part of the difference wasn't just black and white, it was country versus town. Because I had no, I did not grow in, up in the country, I grew up in, in the city. So that was part of it, but you know, they're, they're different. Uh, you know, it was, I grew up in the Episcopal Church, they were Baptists. Uh, it was just a lot of different things that came together, but there was a very, clearly from the start, a very, very strong sense of family. Uh, extended family, and then most of them were very large families. So, uh, the longer I c continued to go there, the more at ease I felt, and the more a part of it I felt, the less self-conscious I felt. So, uh, as I spent more and more time there, uh, you know, I began to be aware of just what, what was holding the, the place together in a cultural sense. And I was aware that there had been a school there, of course, like so many other black schools in uh, 1968, it closed down and uh, desegregation occurred. So the school was no longer there, but the church was. And it, it was apparent to me after being there for a while that if I really wanted to get connected and learn about the place and understand what was going on, I needed to, to attend their church. Now here are two pictures of the church taken about 19 years apart. And I, I think the contrast is interesting. Uh, the, the bottom picture, the newer one, demonstrates clearly that they have been keeping it up and improving it. And that I think it demonstrates just how important the, the church is. And we talked yesterday a bit about schools and churches and you know what was the what were the factors that kept these places alive and vital? And uh, the, church, the, the school is gone. I think that if the church ever goes, and I think this is probably true of a lot of these communities, if the church ever goes, the community goes too. There's nothing left uh, to hold it together. This needs to be in the history books. Uh, black people and white people need to understand that uh, fresh out of the slavery, a lot of black people took charge of their lives. And, and I would think that psychologically, for a black person, that would have a very positive effect, knowing that that was in fact what happened. Now, if you're in a place for 25 years, you're, you're gonna see people born and you're gonna see them die. And uh, Mona Elipshaw died in 2002 and I love this photograph, and it's funny when you when you do what I do, and you you know you have to at some point edit your photographs and decide what you're going to show and what you're not. And it, the first little exhibit that I had was about ten years in, and so I went through all everything I had done then. The next thing I did was for the book, you know, I went and I had a lot a lot more photographs by then, so I went through everything another time. And then, and, I, and I'll mention this in a minute. I do have a traveling exhibit now. I did it again, and this photograph, I missed it the first two times. But for some reason, it popped up, and I thought, "Oh, this is this is a good photograph." You know, it shows a lot about how his family felt about him. Uh, kids studying Texas history, studying American history, need to learn through their text, through their curriculum, that these places existed. It wasn't just sharecroppers and domestics, that, that there were some uh, emancipated slaves who were able to establish their own communities, become uh, 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 relatively autonomous, take care of themselves, provide for all their needs. And why, well, aside from the fact that it happens to be true, it presents another way of 
evaluating black people. It's starting to change. What happened here today in this uh, symposium is a part of that. And uh, so I'm really, I'm dedicated to that. I think that that is, that needs to happen. And really, there's really a one word that can describe all of that, and that is justice. We need to have justice. And so that's why I'm engaged in this and why I think a lot of other people are getting engaged in it.